Welcome to another video by Lame Creations Log Analysis Made Easy. This is a follow up video to my top three most useful apps that I have found in Splunk Base. And we're going to talk about Splunk Dashboard Examples. Splunk Dashboard Examples can be downloaded from Splunk Base right here. It's app 1603. And I will demo this. It is not actually an app you use in production, but it has great utility. This doesn't do anything per se. It just shows a lot of visualizations and then examples of how to do it. You want to know how to do charts, maps, events, table viewers, single value. You just come in here and click it. So for example, I want to know how to do stuff with a single value element. I can just click here. It's going to come back with data already built in. So you don't have to do anything. It might use your internal logs. It might use, like if I go here and I hit open and search, it might attach a CSV, but nope, in this case, it's using my internal. And so everyone can do it. Here's what it looks like without any decorations. You wanna see what it looks like compared to an hour before, so we can have trend lines. What if you want a spark line underneath? How do you do that? What if you want a spark line with changes? Um, and this one has a drill down, as you notice. None of these have a drill down. I have over here, I get a drill down. You wanna see how each of those is done? You've got the, the row here. It's all gonna be one row and here's your first value. You can see it, no decorations, it says no decorations. Here's how it was done, there's the query and here are the options. But since they didn't do anything, I don't think there's anything out of the box that's gonna happen. You can see they just turned off trend line and spark line. Here, this with trend indicator, they turned the option trend internal minus one hour. Notice it says it wanted to go look at, compare it to one hour before. So they just did a time interval minus one hour and they took the spark line off. And then under the label, they put this compared to an hour before. So that's why that hour before shows up. Down here, we've got spark line. Spark line was turned on. Next one, spark line, all these different things. I'm just gonna guess they're all there use thousand separator under the label. So it's spark line trend indicator, yep. And then the very last trend interval, use thousands under the label and a drill down. So it just shows you exactly how to use that with all of the code. You want a single value with color. This will give you, hey, you know what? Maybe you want to change it up and spice up. We'll give you some other options. And then you can just come and look at how the code is written and Away you go. And what I'll do is I'll then take this example and I'll apply it to what I'm trying to do and then make the small modifications. All right, I come back to my examples. An example I wanted to show was formatting. People will ask all the time I get this, how can I make certain values in my tables be different colors and then have kind of like a, a scale of the range based off the value, give it colors? Well, I can tell them, or come in right here, table formats. This is a great little tool. Just come in here and grab the table formats. Again, it's gonna use, this one is a lookup file. Um, I can see that, but if I hit open and search, they did a thing called Splunk stock. Um, it just comes with it. And you'll notice all the values come back as numbers. When it's done, it's turned it into dollar signs with comma separation. It's kind of nice. Here we can see that format columns we got a, it's doing a based off the source type and then we got some color schemes here we've got this one here that actually highlights certain fields you can read it using custom defined colors based on individual cell value so if a cell value in the source type field is a certain value it'll give it a color and all the rest are non and then we also do a scalar uh, custom defined colors on ranges so if these numbers fit into a certain range they get a color Okay, so how do I do that? Again, I come down here, grab the very first panel, and that's the those are the things that make that occur. I can there's a format color, and it's going to say apply it to the source type, and then give it a shared palette. Here's your color palette, and the scale is based off the category. So it's going to apply these colors based off what it comes back. Basically, if I read this right, it's just going to give a different color to every every value you've got. Whereas the next one, and so here, then we also have color based off the count. 
and it basically said grab the max color and the min color and give them colors. And that's white is the min color and the max color is this green and so that's kind of where we're getting those colors from. The next one is a range and you can see here the range. So first they did source type and they called out, remember I said it puts Splunk D in the scheduler. Basically here's a color, type is a map, when it sees and then it just put in different values and gave it a color. Here on the list, here's the list of colors and then they made a threshold, 0 to 30, 70, 100. And so it's basically going to use these colors at, in the color palette and then use it across those four and basically if it fits in that range, there's your colors. Last one here is just color formatting. So it was doing a format on the number, on the volume field, which is this volume right here. And it says use precision, the precision of zero. So we're not going to carry on multiple. If there's decimals, I, um, you're not going to do that. So it's just going to make them all integers, number, whole numbers. Then we're going to say use thousand separators. True, that's what gives you the commas. And then we're going to do, what's the unit? The unit will be a dollar sign. That makes it the dollar. And I want the unit position before. I mean, I don't know why I would do this, but if I changed it to after, now the dollar sign would show up over here. So that is that is charts, ranges, things like that. I'm just going to go quickly over. I don't want to go over each of these. You can do this on your own. You want to know how to do maps. There's maps. You want to do event annotations. So for example, you, you make certain comments about your code, you can actually put that right there. I think that's actually a really cool feature. It's a good use case. Chart overlay, so you can put like two different charts on top of each other. So single value with color. Map elements, you wanna do any sort of chloroplast custom maps, there you go. This talks about recursive searches, inline searches, report searches, post-process, real-time searches. So these are primarily how to deal with different types of searches. Here, um, how to deal with null, search results setter, how to deal with tokens. Here's the refresh and refresh display date, uh, refresh display that I was going to change. I'm gonna demo that later. Dashboard data sampling, how to take input, from the different sources, how to do different drill downs, how to set layout elements, how do I image overlay with a single values, panel groupings, how do I use custom visualizations, tree map, location tracker, things like that. So here are some just some custom visualizations, show you how to download them, put them in, things like that. How to do token co uh, customization. So there is just a ton. Here's your default environment values. I love I, this is a great uh, reference for me if I want to get any of these fields. So for example, hello administrator, it's telling me who I am. All of this. How does it do that? It's using all these different built-in environmental variables. So there are a lot of options there for you. I'm not going to take the time to go through every one of them, but this dashboard. These examples are really, really valuable.